Mr Chairman, I'm here today because I recognise the exceptionally high level of parliamentary and public interest in our progress. Interest in our work is perhaps um, keenest for those who lost loved ones or are otherwise um, directly affected by the Iraq conflict. I should like to say directly to them that my committee and I feel a continuing duty to ensure that they have access to the truth. <coughs> That was something to which we, and they in the um, meetings we had with them at the beginning of the inquiry, <coughs> attached the highest priority. I ask them, and indeed everyone, to judge us ultimately on the report we deliver. What they and you want to know at this point is, I think, the same. What it will take to get the inquiry finished, and how did we get to where we are now? And there are three key factors I would like to mention which have influenced our timetable. The first, that the issues arising from the decision to participate in the invasion of a sovereign nation are of the very gravest kind. They touch on the operation of government, the relationship between ministers and the public they serve, and the information given to Parliament. They are sufficiently powerful, these issues, to have sparked some of the biggest public protests this country has ever seen. And for those reasons, I and my colleagues have been clear since the outset that we have to be rigorous and thorough at all points in our work. Then the second is point is that the scope of the inqu this inquiry is unprecedented. Unlike many inquiries, we are not concerned with a single incident and its aftermath, rather we cover decisions over a nine-year period and the consequences that flowed from them. And the third factor is that many of these decisions and the actions that have flowed from them are interlinked by a web of advice, discussion and debate. That's the way all governments do business. But it creates a real challenge for this inquiry because of its scale. One of the practical consequences is that we have heard evidence from over 150 <coughs> witnesses. We've taken more than 130 sessions of oral evidence. In 2011, at the end of those hearings, I underestimated the time that we would subsequently need to analyse more than 150,000 documents, government documents, and then to construct an accurate account of events using all the sources available to us. My committee and I want and intend to deliver our report to the Prime Minister as soon as we possibly can. But as I said to the Prime Minister in my letter of 20th January, I see no realistic prospect of doing so before the general election. We have to maintain the principles <coughs> by which we have operated throughout. The principles are those of fairness, thoroughness and impartiality. And it's our duty to deliver a report which gives the government, parliament, the public and particularly all those who have been deeply affected by the events in Iran the answers they deserve.